All right, so everything is good, everything is on, and you are here. That's the most important part. So thank you for joining today in the World Work Tape Group, and it's a healing class. It's an it's a moment together for healing for um, the things that are coming up in your say in your experience of yourself and. And they come up for the reason of healing, not for any other reason. So that's that's why you're here. That's why we join in this because there's a light given to us in in sharing a say a shared purpose and sharing the one purpose um, that will lead us uh, say lead us to the recognition of of yeah of oneness. So today, the uh, title of the meeting will be like Tempted by Tunis. And uh, that's uh, interesting, of course. So this is one of the chapters from the book, or uh, paragraphs, The Government of Eden. And <clears throat> so the Government of Eden, in, in chapter 4, we're now, and there's a specific section about Tempted by Tunis and pairs of opposites um, thinking that there is such a thing and thinking that that is normal or something and something to deal with bad and good healthy sickness and and all this now you know that this is it's like one of the major themes you could say and um, in order to to make a move in that in in your say in your release of all of that um, this meeting is specially set up for that. So there, uh, the direction is the release of the pairs of opposite, huh? above and beyond pairs of opposite. It will be the video that we're looking at. So this is a major theme in Joel's work, you could say, but also in your awakening, because as soon as you open your eyes, you see differences. You see something that's good, and that changed into something that's not so good or or vice versa that's about the variety that you will have and one makes you happy and the other maybe not now this this is interesting so this is this is like an, a balance that can go this way it can go that way like oh oh i hope it will stay like this then i'm fine but is that really true no, no of course not so since the basis of what you are experiencing is a dream is what we say is like it's a dream it's an adamic dream a dream of you as a human being in this world and um, <clears throat> a path the path that you have chosen like the path that is given to you is an infinite way an infinite way not that it will take a, a very long time in order to awaken but this is the way, in fact, to awaken to infinity and recognizing there isn't anything else. And Joel will come and help us with that, with some of his writings and some of the, his talks. And um, so that's one part. Another part is we will use a part of another book, and that's the parenthesis in eternity uh, for the meditation. And see, then something becomes already much more clear, in fact, by this meditation, because it, it will bring you back to a certain moment, like the only real moment that is really there. And that has nothing to do with a future imagining. It has nothing to do with a, a past full of who knows what. No, it brings you back to this present moment and which is the only place and only time that exists like this in this instant in this moment in this way you find yourself now this is the only thing that occurs and that's not because i tell you but because it is and the the moment you can allow that moment to become total then in fact you enter into infinity you will have an experience of your spaciousness of your of your totality of you like the one thing in which you will see yourself as one as complete as whole and perfect just like you were created so what we're 
pointing at, what we're in fact focusing on. What we want as a full experience in our awareness is that, and not anything else. Now, what do you need to do for that, is what you ask. It's like, well, what do I need to do for that? How can we do this or that, so that it will be happening? It's like, well, this goes a little bit different. The, the release of the two-ness, or the temptation to two-ness, the release of that, of your ideas about the differences, or about the motives and future goals that you have, the release of those ideas are actually helping you to come quickly into, into presence, into this moment. Now that is going to be helpful. So what do you do for that? Release as much as you can. How do I release? Breathing, not picking up thoughts, uh, breathing, relaxation, um, laughing, crying, whatever is needed for you to, say, lose your hold on ideas that are hurting you. This has happened. That is so painful. This is terrible. This is so, this and this and this and this. You know all this. It's like all these things that we value in the sense of their terribleness. We, we're afraid of them, that they might happen and do something with us or with our loved ones. Now, that concern is what hurts you. And it's also not necessary. Because what you see, what you have just discovered with your perception of differences, is something that is not a reality. It was an Adamic dream. So, coming back then to this moment, realizing that this is the only thing that is going on, bringing it up back right here, is really what what the healing will, yeah, will be. And that is a, a moment, in, in fact, in which you recognize that you're not determined by events outside yourself, but that it's actually starting within you, and that this all this totality of of being is in you. So this is where your kingdom is. Huh? We'll, we'll talk about that today too. It's like this is your inner kingdom that you're going to go into the direction of and make contact with. How do I do that? By going within, by not holding on to anything outside, by going within, by breathing, by relaxing into that, letting that come to you. It will come to you. So, as soon as there's space in your consciousness by your release of your ideas, there's also the God experience, the communication with your Creator. Now this is what we're practicing in the meditation. And this meditation is really like made for it. So I, I love to share that with you. And... God is, and the only time God is, is now. God is ising now, and this ising continues as a continuity of the now. It is always now in, the king, in God's kingdom. It is never 15 minutes ago or 15 minutes from now. We are living a godless life every moment that we waste time living in the past. There's nothing God can do about the past because God is not there. God is here. God is now. The place whereon we stand is holy ground now. If anything is to take place in what we call the future, it has to be a continuing of the presence of the God of now. The only way to bring ourselves under God's law is to give up both the past and the future and align ourselves with God through the realization of omnipresence, omni-action, omni-being, all here now.
le seul moment où Dieu est et maintenant. Dieu est et le seul moment où Dieu est et maintenant. Dieu est en train d'être maintenant et c'est en train d'être continue comme une continuité du maintenant. Dans le royaume de Dieu, c'est toujours maintenant. Ce n'est jamais il y a 15 minutes, ni dans 15 minutes. Nous vivons une vie athée à chaque moment où nous perdons du temps à vivre dans le passé. Il n'y a rien que Dieu puisse faire au sujet du passé, parce que Dieu n'est pas là-bas. Dieu est ici et Dieu est maintenant. La place où nous nous tenons est terre sainte, maintenant. Si quelque chose doit se passer dans ce que nous appelons le futur, il faut que ce soit une continuation de la présence de Dieu, maintenant. La seule manière de nous amener sous la loi de Dieu est d'abandonner à la fois le passé et le futur et de nous aligner sur Dieu par la réalisation de l'omniprésence, l'omniaction, l'omniêtre. Tout cela ici, maintenant. Right, so thank you for joining on joining the meditation. And the this meditation is not just a meditation, of course. So it's like this is your individual experience that you're diving deeply in. And um, yeah, nothing is what it seems. So it's like here's an opportunity to dive deeply into your stillness in order to have an experience of, of communication. That's really what this is for. So all that is is being used, you could say, or you can use that in order to come into the present moment, to practice the presence, as Joel would say. Like all this, all this is one exercise to come to the present moment, because only this present moment is free of fear. Only this present moment is in fact able to show you totality. So that's uh, the training, that's the practice, that is where everything is heading in fact, because everything else will fall away, because it's temporal, it, it appears to be something. And this is really interesting of course in our healing class or in our yeah, world work, is that everything that we see is is in fact gone it's already over it's passed before it even comes to you and um, now why is it coming up you could ask and like why is all this stuff coming up why is all this hmm, conflict or why is all this sickness or where is all this um, need coming from and and that's a good question it's like where is that coming from why is it coming up? Why is this coming up? That's also a good question. Like, why is it coming up? Well, if you see it like this, it, it might help you tremendously to, to release it. Um, it's like it's, it's not coming up to confirm that these aspects that you perceive that they are real. Uh, sickness, pain, death, um, limitation, disaster, you name it. It's like that is not coming up to be fixed or it's not coming up to show its reality. It's not coming up to 
to show you what reality is. It's like, well, yeah, stand with your feet on the ground. This is what happens here. Like, no, that's not why it's coming up. That was an old idea that was gone a long time ago, you could say. It's like, that's an old idea. So the only reason why all this, these maybe even painful memories are coming up or ideas of a past that is still hunting you, haunting you in some kind of way, or uh, painful memories that seem to be coming up now and then. And all the stuff that we don't have to look for, but are presenting themselves just like that. And seem to be increasing at times and other times it seems to be a little bit easier but what to do with that what to do with that now your human response has always been fixing it numbing it denying it um yeah it's like well it's not very spiritual the way that I live my life or that I experience my life. It doesn't seem to be very spiritual or whatever your idea can be. So why is it coming up? It is now coming up because in fact you're ready to let it be healed. And that is literally with every situation that comes up. Instead of the discomfort that you are experiencing, instead of connecting that, to a person, or to your body, or to an event, or to circumstances. You're not going to do that. You're not binding it with anything in this world. Not at all. So what happens then? You stay with that feeling. You stay with your practice too. It's like, I am my father of one. Um, I want to experience that. And in the meantime, whatever comes up as a discomfort in me, I'm just allowing that to be there. I, in fact, include that in all thoughts, like all ideas are welcome. I'm not going to reject them because I've tried to reject them and it did come back to me. There's no sense in trying to get rid of it or no sense in trying to forget it. It's not working that way. So it's like in the allowance of all of this, healing can take place. Now, what is healing? When healing takes place, in fact, you see it dissolve. Suddenly, you see like, oh, what I was holding on to, what I was feeling as pain or as um, yeah, sadness or who knows what, is suddenly dissolved and I feel some completely different. So these procedures, you could say, that you move through stuff, can take a couple of days, or it can take 24 hours, or it can take uh, can take not so much time. But for sure, if you are not fixing it, if you're not uh, doing anything else with it, then including it in, in fact, you have a great chance that it just changes, that it just is going to be taken from you. Now then, you are free of it, and it doesn't have to come back um, to uh, yeah to be processed again but if I connect it to a person then this person will remind me of the occasion or this per uh, this event will be a past memory that keeps coming back to me is like oh I'm afraid that that's going to happen again because blah blah uh, that happened before too so this is the thing that that we need to get into in fact what we have to learn in order to allow ourselves to to let everything collapse in this moment all include every crazy idea every good idea every pair of opposite all of it we invite it all in instead of fighting it or trying to figure out what's the best or what is the middle way or what is like where do they come together it's like well just allow it to collapse in on you. Feel whatever you feel. Release whatever you can. And allow everything to change. Allow the next moment to be new. Um, allow every moment to be new. Don't hold on to anything. Because why would you? That was the past. That is over. Huh? Joel says this too. It's like, that's over. God is not there. It's gone. It's over. 
the past is over. Now I let that go. So here, my future too. It's the same as the past. If I, if I hold on to the past, I pre, yeah, in fact, expect a future that is very much alike to the past. I will never be able to experience this brand new moment that is given right here, right now, because God is the creative principle, principle of my being. God is the light. God is, yeah. This is. And this is all happening within me. In in this instant, it is happening within me, not anywhere else. So, I'm I'm the center in that sense. I'm the center of the universe. I'm the ruler of the universe. It starts with me, not anywhere else, because the kingdom of heaven is within me. Seek first the kingdom within, and all else will be added unto it. It's like this is literally the teaching of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Huh? This is, I and my Father are one. I am the light of the world. <clears throat> Seek first the kingdom. These are the, the basics, the basics, the fundamentals. Now, to recognize that is to have your eyes wide open, you could say. You're not going to make any perception real, but you are looking at everything in a different way. Now, for instance, I'm just taking an example. It, it really doesn't matter what I use for that. But here's an example. You can say like, okay, we had a meditation. Eh? That's We had a meditation. So we were reciting something of Joel. Why did Joel give this? Joel gave this to extend his light literally into infinity. He was open, he was transparent in order to express this, to give that to you, that it reaches you right now, right here, that it can, can inspire you of, in fact, recognizing that that is infinite, that did not, it is not like 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, or 10,000 years ago. No, it's happening right now. Like the recognition is still the same. Now here we come, reciting this. Who is reciting it? Is that this this person that is talking to you right now, or is this coming from a whole different place? It's like literally, there's an extension into infinity, and it will find you. It will find you right now, and whether that is now or whether that's now, <laughs> whether that is in 10,000 years, or whether that's now, that would be totally the same idea. Now here is our recital in, in French. Michelle is extending herself into infinity, into giving this away, giving the light that she receives by being inspired to actually do this, to actually give this away as a present to herself, as a present to you recognizing that she is inspired by by a god you could say by god um totally passing by on all the possible opposites that you could come up with so it's like here's the pure light entering giving it's being given us in this instant for you to recognize to receive to be inspired to actually come into that for yourself. So this is this is in fact you have to open your eyes, otherwise you miss completely what is actually going on. And that is in every minute the same. Nothing is what it seems. No, there's not a sick person on that bed. No, there's no such thing as disease. No, there's no such thing as death. No, there's no such thing as an, a lack or limitation. There is not. Look again. Be still. Listen. Look again. Look again. Look again. Because it's not what it seems. So in other words, the, the, the inspiration that comes from spirit is for you that all these situations, in fact, are for the glory of God and not for anything else. That's why it's happening. It's only for you a reminder of where you truly abide and truly am. So this this is a short version. <laughs> this is the short version of that, but it's so incredibly helpful. And, and yes, it needs practice. 
absolutely so this is on a moment by moment basis because now you forget it already it's like no 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 wait stay right here not go anywhere so joel is going to remind us of that too in his very tempted by tunis Wild work to learn to release any worldly concern, to relinquish human beliefs, to realize where you truly abide and what your true sufficiency is. Fear not. In this series, we work with questions and answers or with healing requests. You are invited to do some healing work before the meeting. You can send in a question, so this is still a request for you to one that is on your heart regarding your personal life in your face asking for attention and healing well, here are some suggestions so here we go to the government of eden chapter four eden which is within you like the kingdom is within you eden represents my spiritual domain our spiritual domain Eden represents the state of harmony or heaven. Eden represents our immortality, our state of being. And why is that? Because it's happening right now. It is this one moment, this one presence. What threw us out of that into what the Master called this world? What threw us out of that? So this is one of the questions that Joel poses. I forgot to put the question mark behind it, but it's a question. What threw us out of that into what the Master calls this world? So you can say like anything that is related to not this moment, anything that's related to a past or a future, anything that's related to a duality, to a an, an pair of opposites, to a belief in good and evil. Uh, this is the, what, what um, Adam did in, the, in his dream, it's like discovering the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now that, that was not really knowledge at all. It was it was the beginning of hell, you could say. It's, it's, but it was a nightmare. He was asleep when he was doing that. Okay, so we continue then with the next expression. But everybody can go back to, into Eden and be pure and have lives by grace. Not by the sweat of his brow, by grace, by the gift of God, by giving up the belief of good and evil by being willing to concede that there is no good man on earth and no bad one, no good woman on earth and no bad one, no good child on earth, no bad one. There is neither good nor bad, but thinking would make it so. Now this is classic Joel literature, I would say. So. Everybody can go back into back into Eden and be pure because in fact you never left and eh? it was just only an, an yeah, nightmare of your own being of your own making Spiritual healing cannot take place on the human plane It can take place only when you have stopped thinking of the person and the disease and the condition and the belief and the claim and have returned to Eden, where there is only God, spirit, wholeness and completedness. So it's like you're not going to use this. You're not going to use spiritual healing as a possibility to fix this dream. No. Why not? So the dream, the, the moment Adam falls asleep, he suddenly has a dream. Huh? He walks through the garden and he eats from this, from this fruit, the, uh, the forbidden fruits. He ate from it. It was a real temptation. He wanted to know about it. He was curious. He, so he got it. So now that, say, entered, yeah, that, that developed, you could say, in, into a nightmare. 
into a dream of separation, disease, disaster, nakedness. He suddenly realized he was naked because he ate of, so there must be good and bad related to your nakedness too. And all this. So it's like all that. In fact, he felt ashamed. He felt guilty. He felt all these things, all these things that have a relationship with, with hell, with plain hell, you could say with plain limitation, with thinking you can be separate from God. Now why can there not be healing in the dream then? Why can there not be healing in the dream? Well, the healing in this dream would be a confirmation of the reality of that dream. It's like you can do a magical trick and, and see that something is working out, or you can take some medicine and see, oh, my cold is gone. But that would only still be within the limitations that you have imposed on yourself, believing that you can be separate from God. So what is healing then? Healing has nothing to do with that. Healing is the, in fact a return to Eden, to allow yourself to return to Eden, to come into the fullness of your being. And when can that happen? Right now. What do you need to do for that? releasing every idea that you hold about this dream content, about this sickness, death, pain, limitation, and all the stuff we've made up in order to prove that we're separate from God. So the, that is the healing, releasing that, releasing past ideas, future ideas, because they have no re reality in truth, they don't exist in truth, and we want to get in touch with truth, having that fully in our awareness. So the only thing that in fact needs to happen is then to release all of it, all of the ideas of limitation and pairs of opposites, in order to have sufficient space in our consciousness to receive the love of God. And it will immediately be there. It's like it's, it's instantaneous. You release your ideas, you release that. You let it go. You come with open hands and an open consciousness, a pure consciousness, as Joel says, it's like you're in, in, within a pure consciousness. What happens? Wembo. I'm back in heaven, realizing I'm one with God. Nothing happened. There was nothing to forgive. There's nothing that occurred because it was just a dream just like you would wake up in the middle of the night after a nightmare you wake up you turn on the light and it's like oh god Whew, that was a dream oh lucky i had no reality does it have effects no so the only thing that's rest yeah that that you are um resting with you could say is is the idea that the dream is over this is this is literally the awakening that we're talking about realizing that the separation is an impossibility it never took place it had no effects and here we are in the realization of the truth of who we are and recognizing that you're home in heaven that you're in eden that you're in heaven and because you could never left you could have never left so that's something that Joel will elaborate on too in this video. We're going to uh, listen to a podcast or to his tape uh, because this is a tape group. So we'll listen to half an hour of the tape, um, say above and beyond pairs of opposites. And this is the um, Kailua special class from 1963. It's my absolute favorite a section of tapes. I don't know why, but, but that's so great. So I'm happy to share that with you and uh, sit with you in it to let Joel speak. That has gone through you. Just so long will you keep yourself out of the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> and once you begin to realize that evil as such has only been a part of my existence through ignorance. And goodness has only been a part of my existence by the grace of God. 
Only then do you come to that place where you become an absolute instrument for the grace of God to flow. Then you become a blessing not only to yourself, but to everyone who comes within range of your experience. Just think in our work. How many people, how many thousands of people, have come to us in lack and found abundance, have come to us in sin and found holiness, have come to us in lack and found abundance, and then ask yourself why? And you say, what, do you have all saints uh, working with you in this work? No. No, we don't only have all saints working with us in this work. I don't think any of us, well, maybe some of you have been saints, but you see, I can't claim it because my sister's sitting over there. <laughs> so I might as well admit that I haven't always been a saint, even if I am now, which I doubt, because my wife's sitting here. <laughs> So I can't get away with that. And humanly, none of us ever will be completely saints or sinners. But the point of the matter is that regardless of what degree of either of these we have been, it must be overcome. Until we come to this recognition that neither my human good nor my human bad is the ultimate determination. The ultimate determination is the recognition of my spiritual identity. Now, when I recognize my spiritual identity, now I can take you through a history book that circles the globe and show you some sinners who have become saints and some dead who have become alive and some poor who have become comfortable. And why? Not by any virtue of myself or yourself or the workers, but by virtue of the recognition of this, that the whole kingdom of God is within you. And it makes no difference at this moment whether that you is a saint or a sinner. The kingdom of God is within you and in the moment that you begin to give recognition to this even in your sins and even while your sins are continuing as long as you are giving recognition to the fact that the kingdom of God is within me it in turn that recognition in turn will be the purifying experience And then you will find what happens in the realm of supply. You see, in the realm of supply, there is only lack and abundance as long as we are dealing with the human realm. There is neither lack nor abundance in the spiritual realm. How many people really believe there is lack? I mean that there is abundance in the spiritual realm. They really believe the kingdom of heaven is just overflowing with gold and silver and diamonds and all the rest of these things. But I'm sure that when you get to heaven, you'll find they haven't got a scrap of anything there at all. Not a scrap of anything stored up. Because it's all consciousness unfolding. All consciousness unfolding and it unfolds as the need appears. Now just think what happens to you once you realize that supply does not come because you're good and lack doesn't come because you're bad. You can be bad and have supply, and you can be good and have no supply, and vice versa. Lack comes 
because of the belief that supply is something tangible and we're all struggling for it. And not only struggling for it, but laying it up where moth and rust corrupt. Whereas supply is omnipresence and it has nothing to do with saintliness or sinlessness or sinfulness. Supply is omnipresence. When we recognize that, the miracle takes place. The sinner, without even thinking of wanting to be a saint, becomes one. We have been held in bondage to sinfulness by believing we were going to get everything when we got good. And we tried it and we couldn't get good and if we got good we didn't get the supply so we went back to being bad. Please remember this. I and my father are one. And all that the father hath is mine. And this is true whether I am a saint or a sinner. I may not experience it while I'm a sinner but it's true if I know this truth when I'm a sinner, it will make me a saint. Why? Because most of the evil in the world is because we're trying to get something we haven't gotten want. And that automatically disappears when you have everything that you possibly can want all the time without even trying for it. Now, I and my Father are one. All that the Father hath is mine. And what hath the Father? Life. Love. These are the two great facets life and love. And the life of the Father is my life. The love of the Father is my love. Therefore, I come into the demonstration of this by my inner attunement, by my recognition of this, and then letting the flow take place. Not by trying to change my outer conduct. If I'm sinning in some way, I'll just have to keep on until the sin stops. And if I'm being good, I'll have to keep on being good until that stops. Because be assured of this, being good has to stop the same as being bad has to stop. They both have to stop until we are neither good nor bad, until we are just the instruments as which God is living on earth. Why callest thou me good? Why? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. Therefore, if temporarily we think we are bad, don't be concerned about it. If temporarily we think we are good, it might do good to uh, be concerned about it. But above all, realize this, that until I stop being both bad and good, I am not going to show forth the kingdom of God or the Son of God, which I am. Because the Son of God, which I am, is not good. Why callest thou me good? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. And there is no bad. This is entirely the illusion brought on by our human sense of what constitutes 
good and bad. Now, we come to as important a place as you will ever come in the spiritual life. And that is to where you face yourself with the truth that you are neither good nor evil. The evil that you have done is the ignorance into which you were born. The good that you think you have done has been the ignorant religion into which you were born. For you could be neither good nor evil. You are of the household of God. And it is the qualities and the activities of God that are yours. They're not yours. They're yours by the grace of God. They're God's manifest as you. You cannot take pride in your goodness. You cannot take pride in your virtue. You cannot take pride in your health. You can only recognize that the grace of God is upon you. Now, when you come to this, you will understand the fact that life is lived by grace. When you reach the place of knowing that life is lived by grace, you will have dropped your human qualities of goodness and your human qualities of badness. And believe me, both of these are evil. Any belief in your goodness or is as evil as the belief in your badness, just as the belief in your prosperity is just as evil as the belief in lack. Because prosperity is no more yours than lack. Prosperity is the gift of God and there is no lack to those who know that. Lack is the product of the belief that supply is mine or yours, or his, or hers. This is the product of, this is where lack comes from. The belief that somebody has supply. Health is the grace of God. Supply is the grace of God. Purity is the grace of God. Why callest thou me good? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. And that is why, when we come to this subject of good and bad, or lack and abundance, or purity and sinfulness, or spirituality and materiality, we perpetuate the entire human experience by the belief that I am good or evil, that I am sick or well, that I am rich or poor. And we come under and into the grace of God only in the realization that we are living by God's grace. And therefore, if we have that which the world calls virtue or goodness, it's ours by the grace of God. If we have that which is called abundance, it is by the grace of God. If we have health, it is by the grace of God. And in the realization of this, we surrender the false sense of human health of human supply, of human sinfulness. <clears throat> we surrender all of that, and then we begin to live under the grace of God, and by the grace of God. But not until 
we have lost all sense of being either good or bad, rich or poor, abundant or lacking, saint or sinner, until we've lost all sense of that and realize that the life we live is really the grace of God. Then you will discover that you have lost the pairs of opposites, sickness and health, richness and poverty, goodness and badness, and you will find yourself just living out. You won't even be living. It will be living itself. And we will always be living with an attentive ear, watching that life unfold within our own selves. At the present time, fortunately, we have a sense of humor that uh, enables us to uh, still live in this world, but not be of it. That enables us to live uh, among our fellow men without seeming to be crackpots. It is this sense of humor that enables us to keep this locked up within ourselves and not give it to others except as they come seeking it, hungering and thirsting for it, and then feeding it to them only in small doses until we are assured that uh, they can eat the meat of the word. Because it all comes down to this, I and my Father are one, and all that God is, I am. Now, I, I can't say this outwardly and openly walking up and down the street. I can't go around to my friends and relatives with that on my lips. That is the mistake, mistake too many people in the religious world have made, setting themselves apart from others. Whereas, the setting apart should only be within themselves. Outwardly live as other men. Inwardly live by grace. And thereby attract to yourself those ready for the word. Don't preach it. You drive them away with it. Don't try to appear different than other men. Don't wear halos. Don't use language that sets you apart and makes them think, oh, you must be some kind of a saint. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you attain any degree of saintliness, keep it hidden within and appear outwardly to the world as other men, yet not acting as other men. Acting from within, from the saintliness that has developed within. Then, by what they sense in you or feel in you, they are attracted to being likewise minded. No one is ever going to be attracted to a spiritual message by preaching it because preaching it only reaches their human mind. Living it reaches their soul. And that is why all of the preaching there is and has been for 6,000 years hasn't changed mankind. They're still out throwing bums at each other. They're still out lying, cheating, defrauding. In spite of preaching, but you see, there must be an end to preaching. There must be an end to telling other men how to live. And there must come a learning of the nature of God as our identity. Locking it up within ourselves and letting it only shine out. And then feeding it slowly and gradually to those who seek it. 
not by appearing to be different than other men, but by being different. By being different only to the degree of the spiritual awareness that has unfolded within us and not trying to be better than we've realized. And not trying to use higher language than we have attained. The day comes when you will realize not only that I am not evil, I have never been evil, regardless of what evil sense may have uh, had possession of me at some time through spiritual ignorance. And you will realize that you are not good and never have been good. And that any qualities of good to which you have given expression has been that degree of godliness that has expressed itself through you. And then when you realize I have never been evil and I have never been good the evil that manifested itself through me was the ignorance of truth. The good that manifested itself through me was my good fortune and having the grace of God shine through, not through any personal virtues of mine. Then in that degree, do you come to this place where you will definitely know that you could not be a saint or a sinner, that you cannot be rich or poor, that you cannot be sick or well. You can be none of these things because the grace of God is your life and it never changes. And it is no different in one than in another. But Upon our recognition of this truth, that it is the grace of God that lives my life, and I am neither good nor bad, and I am neither rich nor poor, I am neither saint nor sinner, I am neither sick nor well, I am neither alive nor dead. I am I. And you know something? That word I is our secret. Everything that the infinite way reveals, no matter how it does it, no matter what the message, it must ultimately lead you to the revelation that I am I. And all that I am, am I. And I am neither good nor bad. I am neither rich nor poor. I am neither saint nor sinner. I am neither Jew nor Gentile. I am neither white nor black nor yellow. I am I. All that God is, I am. All that the Father hath is mine. And as long as I live in that inner awareness of I, of I-ness, I, I is the Father within me, and I is the Son that appears outwardly. And all that the Father within me is, the Son without is. And as long as I can live in that consciousness, I will never be good and I will never be bad. And I will never be rich, and I will never be poor. I will never be a saint, and I will never be a sinner. I will always be I. And I was, will always be showing forth the I-ness, which 
is God appearing as the Son. And I will claim no qualities for myself, neither good nor bad, rich nor poor, saint nor sinner, white nor black, nor yellow nor pink, none of these things. I am I. And you just say that to yourself, I. And see whether that I is oriental or occidental. Just see which it is. And you will discover I is neither. Oriental nor occidental is neither Jew nor Greek. Neither bond nor free. I am I, and all that God is, I am, and all that the Father hath is showing itself forth through me. And the only thing I need to continuously show this forth on earth is the willingness to share it. The moment I lose that, I damn it up, and I lose it. It is only while I am willing to share it, but not share it in the sense of going out and shouting it from the housetops, not share it in the sense of telling it to those who are not interested. That isn't sharing it. That's trying to force it on somebody. No. My willingness to share it is shown forth in my willingness to impart to those who seek. Come without money and come with money. Come in saintliness and come in sinfulness. Come any way you like, but come. And receive. There will be neither praise for your goodness and there will be no condemnation for your badness. There will only be the recognition of the saintliness which is the state of your soul. As it is, as it always has been, always will be. And when you can face this world, looking at everyone, seeing the saintliness of their soul with no judgment as to their human evil or human good, you have entered the Christ ministry and you are about your father's business and not until then. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you so much for sharing and say making that very clear to us. Um, that there's no pairs of opposite and that you have to give it away in order to keep it. So these are great reminders and uh, so with that we come to an end of this uh, meeting that we have now. So I will play some music um, and we do that also to relax, to to let everything fall into place for a moment of what we've heard, what we've received and in fact um yeah celebrate that so that's that's what i'm going to do right now so thank you so much for your presence and <clears throat> right after this there's there will be a different meeting so at say around a half hour we that will start but you will see that so thank you so much for your presence for your being here for your say actively and getting yourself into the world work and don't forget to send in your requests or concerns or ideas and uh, or questions it's also possible and thank you for everything thank you so much